Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. All right, we are now joined by our old friend Glenn West of Go247 Sports. You can follow him on Twitter at GlennWest21. He covers all things from recruiting and also been covering a little bit of LSU basketball. You know, we don't really know a lot about this team because damn near everybody is new. Um, I saw, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you gave a starting projection for us, uh, the starting five. So yeah. tell me, uh, you know, what kind of the update is there? Uh, who, who are you thinking is the starting five for this team and kind of a rundown of each player? Yeah. So, you know, this was, you know, it's a little hard to believe first that it's basketball season already, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I ran out of prediction piece a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was last week, even I can't quite remember, but had a uh, justice Hill, uh, starting at point guard, um, I believe I had um, the the starting center being KJ Williams. Those are two guys that are obviously from Murray State that followed Matt McMahon over from Murray State. Uh, and then the middle spots, I had uh, Adam Miller, I uh, had Emwani Wilkinson, and I had the freshman Jalen Reed, who's the the true freshman out of uh, I can't remember where he's out of, but he's a top sixty player, one of the really just great, great gets for Matt McMahon. Uh, him and Tyrell Ward are the two true freshmen that are both top 60 players that I think are going to have huge roles on this team. But um, yeah, I mean, look, you know, Hill is, you know, a, a freshman or no, he's a like a junior, junior, senior, um, but he's been around, you know, McMahon for a long time. He's a guy that I think has built a lot of trust with uh, with coach McMahon. He was a starting point guard last year at Murray State. So I think there's a lot of trust there. And uh, just a, a really prototypical, you know, assist to turnover ratio was, you know, three to one. It led one of the, you know, one of the leaders in the SEC or in the country really uh, last year for Murray State. So he's going to be a huge piece. Um, you know, Adam Miller, obviously a guy that we knew of last year, just didn't get a chance to see him play. But I think he absolutely could be uh, the leader on this team in terms of scoring. Uh, just a really just all three level score can get to the paint can get uh, to his jump shot he's got a really nice three point stroke as well so uh, I think you're going to see some big things from him uh, and Wani Wilkinson I think a lot of fans know um, a guy who's a, a defensive menace a defensive hound um, but I think you know is going to be asked to step into more of a leadership role this year uh, going to be asked to expand that offensive range a little bit you know he's really known for his corner three ball. I mean, that was where he shot, I think, around 45, 50% last year on those corner threes. Um, but, you know, he's going to have to develop all that and, and get back, uh, you know, to just being a little bit more of a, a versatile offensive player. Um, but Jalen Reed is the guy that I'm really excited about. You know, he's a true freshman. He goes about 6'10", 230, um, has, a, has a nice little stroke. He can handle it a little bit supremely athletic I think he's going to be a guy you can ask to defend the rim a little bit uh, and he'll be a, a really great great uh, presence down there on defense he's so athletic you know we talked with Matt McMahon this week already and kind of what his impressions were is he's as unique a player as he's ever coached you know and that's only just you know three or four months in uh, and and if you remember Matt McMahon's history you know you only have to go back a couple of years when he was coaching John Morant so I mean that's a a pretty, uh, you know, uh, out there statement for him to say that. So uh, I think you're going to see some really big things from Jalen Reed this year. Uh, and then KJ Williams is a really solid uh, veteran, uh, really savvy scorer, a uh, guy who probably will get you double doubles, uh, you know, night in, night out. Uh, he's expanded his range a little bit since last year as well. Uh, but he's another Murray State guy that I think uh, LSU was really lucky to land and, and, and really could have gone to the NBA, I think, last year and had a, a nice two-way contract deal. I mean, he's he's that talented. And so really good starting five. And I think they got some depth there, too, that's going to be really impressive to watch. All right, so let's talk about the depth. Obviously, Now, speaking of the freshmen, that was probably the most impressive thing that Matt McMahon did. You yeah. know, we, we figured he would get some Murray State players – Probably did, you know, his best player, K.J. Williams, you know, who's the conference player of the year. That was a little bit of a surprise. But the most surprising thing were those two or three freshmen. Uh, the other one was Sean Phillips, the big seven-footer. Is yeah. is he going to see a lot of playing time or is he going to kind of – I would venture to say he's probably more of a project piece this year. Um, you know, he he's about seven feet. He's a guy that can – uh, really uh, do some some great things, but um, you know they they have some depth there. I think they like Kendall Coleman, the 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 back as a as a good forward for them. He's the guy that averaged 16 and 10 last year for Northwestern State. 
uh, actually had a really nice game against LSU last year. I think he had about 17 points and 13 boards uh, in that game. So, you know, he can, uh, you know, he, he can, he can get to his spots and he can be an impact player against some SEC level competition, which is really nice. Um, you know, Tyrell Ward is a guy that I flirted putting with in the starting lineup. He's another one of those savvy wings. Uh, he's a true freshman, uh, a lot of hype around him. Um, but you know, he's, he, he's going to be a really versatile defender, I think for you as a potential six man off the bench, but I think he could also really, I mean, you could throw him in the starting lineup over in Wani too. I mean, he's going to be that kind of impact player. I think you'll see him close games a lot uh, of the time. So another really true impact, true freshman there. So I see really Ward Coleman, uh, being huge parts, Trey Hannibal, the other transfer from Murray state. Um, I asked him, I actually asked Coach McMahon about him yesterday. He's been cleared by the NCAA, so he's going to be eligible for the season uh, mm-hmm. after his second transfer in as many seasons. Um, so that's good news for LSU, and they really like what he can do uh, as a versatile uh, guard. So I think you're looking at probably those core eight. Um, you could probably slip a ninth in there as well. Um, but I think those are going to be the guys that you know, you'll see from a really early stage of the season start to solidify some roles. And it's just about tinkering what those rotations look like early in the season. All right. So we got our, you know, solid eight there. Uh, The ninth, well, I'm interested in that dude from NC state, the shooting guard. Um, Yeah. Cam Hayes, he'll be in the mix. Yeah. Cam Hayes will be in the mix. I think uh, Justice Williams, the, you know, one of the guys else she was able to keep uh, from, from the last coaching staff with coach Wade. Uh, Justice Williams is a really talented player, and Williams came to LSU last year, if you'll remember, as a, really a senior in high school. He left a year early, and so he had that um, kind of welcome to college, I think, year for him where he really got a chance to see how fast the game is. Uh, and so really you could treat this as his real true freshman year. Um, now that he's kind of had a year in the program, um, I think he's going to be a guy that – um, you know, could could see some sporadic playing time. I'm not sure if he's an every game kind of rotational piece right out the bat. But, you know, one of the things Coach McMahon has told us in all of his interviews so far is that, you know, the, the this is a roster that's so new that, you know, the guy that might not be playing right away, uh, you know, in these games now could could be a, a key piece for you come, you know, February, March. So you just never really know with the with the team that's this fresh. All right, last question about basketball, and then we'll move on to football. Sure. Um, obviously, you know, it, it, part of this, part of the, the 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 situation with Matt McMahon and this team is just getting comfortable with each other. A lot of new guys, a lot of new faces, and chemistry. So I know it's hard to predict right now, but just looking at the skill set and the team um, that you know they're going to put out in game one, if you had to predict that this team uh, or uh, compared to last year's team. If you had to predict that they would be better at what a certain thing, what would it be? Like, what, what, what where have they improved from? I guess from last year's team. So I, I think this is going to be a much better shooting team um, than than maybe people think. Um, last year's LSU team, we don't have to get into the numbers, but uh, three point shooting wise, they were not great. And so I do think there's going to be room for improvement there. Um, you know, whether it's with you know Hannibal or Ward. Um, you, you know, you got uh, Wilkinson, who I think they're expecting to take another big leap. K.J. Williams can stretch the floor a little bit for you. Adam Miller can certainly stroke it. So I think they have a lot more shooters on this team than maybe last year's team did. Um, so I think that's an area where LSU could certainly improve. Um, where I'm going to be really interested to see is, you know, LSU last year was just so hellacious defensively when they were, you know, on their game. I mean, between Tari and you know, uh, Pinson and all those guys, they were so locked in defensively and they had that full court press really down to a, to a T uh, really early in the season. I'll be curious to see what they look like defensively. I honestly don't know what to expect because they are a little bit on the shorter side, especially guard. They're not, um, you know, they don't have a ton of really, you know, six, three, six, four guards. A lot of these guys are kind of in that six foot to six foot two range uh, at guard. Um so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see kind of how they operate defensively, especially on the perimeter. Um, but I, I do expect this to be a, a much better shooting team than last year. And better half-court offensive sets under Matt McMahon. I hope so. You'd yeah. hope so. Yeah. That's a specialty. That, that's, a that's, specialty. Kind of what, that's kind of what his specialty is. Yeah, absolutely. He's He comes in with, uh, you know, some really great uh, schemes. You know, it's not overly difficult. 
he 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 thinks it'll be simple to, to kind of pick up. You know, they think they're kind of on the the later stages of implementing their offensive and defensive systems. So uh, that's good news to hear that you won't be having to really tinker with a whole lot in season. And it's just about finding those right combinations that that play well together. All right. Well, he's Glenn West. Go 24-7 sports. Follow him at Glenn West 21 on Twitter. Glenn, uh, appreciate your time as always, man. You have a good one. Yep. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.